Before I show you about the colored pencils, I'm going to put a little bit of watercolor on this Bristol board, and then I'll show you how we can put the colored pencils on top. So I'll just play around, put some colors. It doesn't have to be anything perfect. Just get it on there. Well, that's the way I would do it, but you could do it your way. Just get a little variety, put some colors around, nothing fussy. Just get it on there, there. And you can go right across because we're going to put colored pencils on that. And some purple maybe, put some of that purple there, maybe some of that green, oh, some of that green for sure. And just kind of put it on, nothing to worry about. Pick up. Oh, this is opaque, but it's, well, I'll put it on anyway because it's a pretty color. That would be my way. You have to do it your way. And then push that over there. Pick up a little bit of this. Put it down there. Put a little bit in here. Okay. So I'd say that's good enough for now. And then we'll come back and I'll show you what we're going to do. Because don't forget, watercolor dries lighter. So even though it might look a little bit dark, it's not going to be dark. Okay, so this is a Prisma pencil, and this is called um, Olive Green. See with the pencil how you can have a slow line? Of course, in anything you can have a slow line. You can have a fast line. See how I press down with that line? And if I press down even more, see how it's a little bit darker? But it's always going to be just a line. I mean, I could use the side of it, but it would take forever to be able to fill in an area. And I have a cushion underneath this, and I would suggest, depending on the look that you want, that you either put a cushion under it, or you could have even a textured underneath it, and it'll give you some texture. And with this, I can also make dots. But now, look at the difference if I use the stick. Oh, yeah, and I would suggest, here's a real stick. See how it's nice and big and long? But I've broken this, and I'm, I'm going to break all of them. They're brand new to me. I've never had them before. But uh, see, now I have a really sharp edge. And I have a lot of distance here that I can cover. So I could still do a line. And I can make marks. But I think the biggest advantage is that I can cover big areas. But let me show you. So here's one of the, the um, Prismacolor art sticks. You can just break it. Ooh, it's pretty hard to break. But see how I have that? Now I can put this on top. And it gets darker and I cover a huge area. I mean, I could even use the whole stick if I wanted to. Right? I could use a whole stick. Now, notice because I'm using just white copy paper, how it doesn't fill in, and you have a lot of white space, so it's going to take a lot of work to get that all covered up. So instead, what I would do is I'd use a colored or a toned paper, and there are many kinds to use. So this is an example of the copy paper, and it's mostly line. And this is parchment paper. I even added some of those uh, that gold pen on there because I was kind of liking that look. And there's my example on the parchment paper. But I probably would mostly fond of the darker paper or maybe a value in between those two, which is going to be this one. And I'm going to show you my demonstration is going to be on that. So this is Canson uh, colored pencil, I mean Canson charcoal or pastel paper. But look at how interesting this is. This is cardstock, and there's that weave going on in there. And I thought, I wasn't going to use it, and I was actually going to tell you not to use anything that had that much texture. But look at how nice it looks. I think it came out really good. I, I love it a lot. And I'm going to show you a couple more things. This is watercolor paper, and I started to put some watercolor on, then I decided, no, let me do colored pencil on there, and then I had too much colored pencil on there because of the lumpiness of the watercolor paper. I just felt like I, I didn't like the way it looked. And so I want to show you what I did. I took off most of the colored pencil, and, and I, this piece of paper right here is all of the pieces of scotch tape of what I've taken off. So when you make a mistake or something you don't like, let me put that on, and let's say you didn't like it, you can just take a piece of scotch tape, you can lay it on there, and you can use the back of your fingernail, and you can lift it off. So see how much I've gotten off? And that's something to know, because whenever people make mistakes, you can use a, um, an eraser, but it's not going to do as good a job. And so this is a very good technique that one of my students taught me because she went on a workshop about colored pencils. Watch, even if I had, while well, I have this here, let me do something even darker right there. And let's say I wanted to take out just a, a line. I didn't want to take out a whole lot. I have 
I'll just use a pencil. Lay that down. Let me push that down. The pencil is kind of soft, so it might not take it off as well as if I used a ballpoint pen. So let me do two of them. I'll do this one with a ballpoint pen and lift it off. Oops, it didn't do a very good job. <laughs> and I think that's probably because I have so much underneath and I have watercolor underneath. We'll sh I'll show you again on what I'm going to do for the exercise. So we'll put this aside. And we'll put that aside for now. And the drawing that I'm going to work on is on this piece of paper. And we're going to use both the sticks and the Prisma pencils. So if I want, because this is going to be a dark object, I'm not going to make the background as dark. But I, I want to put something on that just get me started. So we'll just do that. I tend to always to go for that purple, because that's me. Oh, and look at this paper. This particular paper has lines in it. Um, it. I know it's a pastel paper, but we'll have to work with that, and it'll give us a background, perhaps. And let's see. We'll take some of the magenta, because I like that. Put that in here. Like I said, we're not going to go too dark, because we're going to have it be dark itself. So I guess maybe I wouldn't be using this paper, because I don't think I'm going to be that happy with it. And now, if I break, this is, this is what I'm using as an example, this Higgins Waterproof ink. And it's black, so even though black doesn't have to look black, I'll, I'll break that black and I'll put some of this on, cover the big area. I guess I'm not too keen about taking too long to do things. So put, I just kind of put that on there for now. And then I'm going to come back with maybe some pencils. See, it's on there. That's good. Put those aside, and now I look. I would prefer to have a lot of colors in there, so I'd get some violet in here. I'd start to press down and see that there's a lot of little ridges in there. Now everyone goes about it in a different way, so there's no one way. And keep turning the paper because you're the boss of it. And put some of that on there, and then I'd want to come across and have a little bit there. And maybe I'll pick some of this. I I hope you don't mind. I'm just going to have a lot of colors on here because. I, I like that. I like a lot of color. Just kind of play around, put it every which way. This suits me. And like that. I'll get it on here as quick as I can so you guys can see. And look, see I went outside? Oh, not to worry. That'll be one of the things that we'll lift. Put some of that down here. Put some in here. Put some in here. Put a little bit everywhere. Oh, this is a pretty color. It's kind of a green See, put that on, put that on, put that on in here. And now if I want to, I have that green, so I'm going to take that darker green and I can start to, maybe I will make a little more definite, which is not my cup of tea, but I think it'll be easier for you to read. See how it's coming along? <laughs> oh, look at how crooked that is. That's kind of cute. So if that's crooked, that means the stopper in here is going to be crooked. So I'm going to make that dark right in there so you can sort of tell that that stopper, maybe the top didn't go on straight or something, would be darker right there. And depending on the light, see how I have the shadow here? That means that the light's coming into the side. So let's see if we can take one of those white. Let's see, this is the Prismacolor white. I think I'd want it darker before I have the white, so let me go darker right back here with a pencil. And then I'll take this white, and I could put some white there. And I'm looking at that. There's some white there. There's a little bit of light right on the side there. And there's a lot of little light along here. And there's some white right here. And oh, you know what, guys? I'm using the drawing that I did this morning in the kitchen where the light was coming in the window and going this way. Right now, because we have the lights on in the room, the overhead, and a side light, look at how the lighting's so different on that. So that's one of the things to keep in mind when you're doing this kind of work is stay with the light the same no matter what you're doing. So we can just fill that in. You can do as much or as little as you want. You could have it be liney. You could have it be um, solid. Yeah, let me show you some examples. Let's see. This one, that's more what I like. See how fun that is? And that's on, uh, that's on sandpaper. It's also used and it's toned. See how the value is just a little bit darker than that paper? And then this is on the dark brown paper. This is more lively. And this is filled in. See, there's like so many ways that you can do it. There's no one way. Whatever way seems natural for you, that's the way you're going to use them. And luckily, you don't have to spray them. So there's no fixative involved, none of that spray stuff. So let me, I'm going to go check on my watercolor and see how that's, um, if it's dry enough for us to work on. 
Okay, so here's the watercolor that we did on the Bristol board. You can see that it's, it's drying lighter, and it has some funny little things happening. That means the sizing is wearing out of it. But it was just on, a, on something I had painted before, and I wanted to just give you an example of painting on this kind of board. I have a little light drawing on here, and I have all these pretty colors. It's not quite dry. It's a little cool down here, so I know it's not dry. But I, I still want to show this to you. And I have my, my bottle of Higgins Waterproof Indian, India Ink. And I'm going to just start to put something on. Oh, it's oh, it's really smooth to work on. That look feels very, very nice. And then I can just do that. Pull that in, pull that in, do that. Go up and down here. I think I'm going to honor some of the colors that I already have on here. So I have some of that pinky purple. So I can put that here. And it goes over that way. And I have some green. I can take one of these greens and break it. Oh, I could use that. I bet I could use that. Oh, uh, the paper is sort of wet, so it's not going on as well as I had hoped. Let me bring the green back here and see if I can get it on. No, sorry guys, that's not working out so good. <laughs> Let me go. I should have waited for it to dry. I'm a little bit too impatient. That's the problem. And I know all of you relate to that and know what I'm talking about. Okay, so we took some time to dry this. And actually, it's still even a little bit warm to the touch. And so I'm going to see if I can make this so it works better than it was working before. Well, the pencil is very soft on that. So maybe the Bristol board is not the best answer. For some techniques, it might be nice. Let me see if this works better here. Oh, yeah. See, that works better now that it's dry. Can you see that? And I can use the side of that. Oh, yeah. Look at that. Cover's nice. Now, don't forget, this is white paper. It would be probably, I think, a lot better if I used a different colored paper. And if there are marks showing up, sometimes it might be because of, I had this laying down on the table and I drew something on it because I knew it wasn't something I was going to keep. All right, now let me get that black just so you can see how nice that would show up. And in here, see, and you go around, down here. See, the black shows up pretty good. I think, do you think so, you guys? There you are. And we can use line and go around. And we can come like that. Oops, it's a little curve in it, but I think it looks cute. So you can put that on. Then you can pick up colors. That's what I would want to do. Pick up some colors and throw a few colors in there. You don't have to do that. That's just what I like to do. You have to find what you like to do. So what I want to do is get really dark here so I can show you how to lift off something that you might think you don't like. So I'll get that on there. It's nice and dark. I hope it looks that dark for you guys. Dark, 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 dark. See, my hand wants to just kind of fly over this, but I know that wouldn't be good, so good to learn from. All right, so that's almost filled in. Imagine this if the paper was a little bit darker, for instance, as dark as this or even as dark as that, how much easier it would be for me to get dark and get this covered. But the big thing is I wanted to show you how to lift with the um, scotch tape. Oh, and I should tell you, if you can, find the scotch tape that's the red scotch plaid. That works the very best. And like I said, hold on to part of that with your finger. I'm going to take a little bit off right there. And I might have to do it a second time. Move that over and take it off again. See how it's coming really, really light? But the big thing I wanted to show you was how you can just even take out a little line. Let's say I didn't like that that's curved there. I can lay that down. And I'm thinking... I had a tool that I could use, an ex what's that called, like a, one of those pencil things that people like when they like sharp little lines. I don't use one, so I'm happy to say I have it, but I, I, I don't use it. See how much I took off? Can you see that? Look at how dark that is. And I could just do it again and lift it off. And I could keep using the scotch tape and keep lifting off until I got what I wanted. I noticed that this particular board is really soft so if I was to put a mark in it with my fingernail let me put some on which might end up being really nice if I were doing some landscapes or something and then if I put this on top see how it's going to give me some lines I didn't realize that till I worked on it just now with you guys here are you able to see those those lines the way it, it's almost like a resist yeah so that would be a possibility for something 
you can kind of see that that if I kept working on it, that might be nice when it's done. But I don't think I'm ever going to like it as much as I like it on the tone paper. I really, really, really like that tone paper. So we'll give you all kinds of papers tonight so you can try them. Um, see you tonight. Bye-bye now.